Hello, I am Calm Cal. Welcome to the third part of Improve or Reuse Your Tired Laptop. Let's get straight into this. It's going to be a long video. Type this in the address line for Baltus Aerosite. This is the software we are using, which is a light operating system specifically created for emulation. It states on the website this can be used or installed onto a USB stick and work alongside your current PC setup without altering the settings. If this is how you want to run this software, then you will have to go into your BIOS setting and change the drive boot order to start with the USB first instead of your current drive. I am running this instead of a hard drive and had to make other changes which I will get to later. So Kodi is built into this software too. These instructions guide you into what version to download. If your computer has a 32 or 64 bit architecture, you will need to select the correct version. This is also available to download for single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi. There are a lot of systems this software can emulate. Here is an extensive list. This software is current and is updated when improvements are made. The latest version here is March this year, 2019. My laptop is 64 bit. To download this software, select download from here or here, or if you want to know more, explore the different tabs instead for further information. I'm going to select download at the end of this line. The file will be compressed into a zip file and takes a couple of minutes to download and will appear in the downloads folder. If you click the install tab, it gives you instructions and helpful info on how to install this software. Also, there is a link here for the software recommended to use, which is Etcher. So if you haven't already installed this, you will need to. I will have a video covering this and other great free software to install on a new PC. Here is a link for this. Windows 10 hides a few things, including file extensions. Get this back by selecting View and tick these two boxes to show more information on files. Extending this box here shows me that the file is a .gz type file, which is a compressed file. We need to turn this back to normal size. Select extract here. I always use 7-zip for this type of thing. It is the best in my opinion. And it will extract to this download folder. I will leave a link in the description for 7-zip and for the other video on how to install it. Great free software to install on a new PC. Plug that twice now. This will be part of it, along with SD card formatter, which I'm using next. I am going to format my USB stick. Link in the description for this software. If you are using a previously used USB stick, I suggest using overwrite format. If it's new, you can just use quick format. I always select overwrite format, but that's just me. When ready, select format. When finished, it will display the file structure, which is FAT32. You can see here it's supposed to be 16 gigabytes, but it never seems to show the correct volume size. Click OK and then start up Etcher. When you start Etcher and you select image, it will automatically open the window so that you can find your file. We want to make sure that we're selecting the right file here because we've got to, to make sure you select the IMG file and not the compressed file. So I'll click on here and then we just want to make sure that we're, we're writing to the right drive the USB stick which is drive letter F in this instance so we're just making sure we've got the right one we just close this window just double check it's not in the other drive letters just close this window and then we're ready just select flash right now it will flash the information to the USB stick once it's flashed it will then double check it it'll go through a validation process next this will go all the way up to 100% when it's ready it will say complete or finished. And then it's it's got it there, one successful device. Right, one flash complete. We'll close this window and now we'll take out the USB stick. So we just click on this upward ang angle here, right click on this one, select open devices, and then we'll right click on the data traveller and then press select remove device and then yes close this window right so when we reboot the computer we need to get into the BIOS so to, in order to do this on mine it's pressing F2 repeatedly while we turn the computer on what I need to do is change this UEFI to legacy mode so I've gone through to the boots menu at the top using the cursor keys and I've pressed enter and I need to change this to legacy support so that's what I'm going to do now we need to save this information so you'll see here so I need to press F10 to save and exit. So I'm just pressing F10 now. 
I want to save these changes and select yes. Alright, so that's the SSD out. This is the USB stick which we're going to run everything on. So I'm just going to put the case back on. I'm not going to bother putting the screws in yet. What I am going to do is plug in power. And also internet connection. Just in case it needs to pull any files. And also the USB stick. I'm just going to plug in there. And I'm just going to turn it on. This is going to be first boot. We got Tiny Linux just popped up. You can see the monitor. There we go. So first boot will take a little while. Just got to be patient. What it's doing is expanding all the information on the USB stick and a little image. First time and a couple of times booting up it'll just be a little bit slow first of all until it's done all its packaging or unpackaging there it is it's booting up all right so you see we've got no sound here so we're just navigating through using the cursor keys but what I'm going to do is try and make things easy see whether it's already programmed for the PS4 controller which I've just plugged in and it is so on this first boot we've not got any sound so I'm going to rectify that so plugged in my PS4 controller to the USB port I'm going to press this button here that's brought up this system um, we've got sound settings down here so I'm going to put system volume all the way up to the top and it's not working on auto so we'll have a look see what else there is um, I think that's going to be it so we select that one and then press back oh had a little bit of sound then and now we've got sound Sometimes that won't happen unless you reboot. So you get like a little message where it gives like a little sound out and it'll say reboot and then you just press the other button and then put restart system or shut down system and then restart it yourself by pressing the button. Next. So what we're going to do now is configure the controller because on the PlayStation 4 it's set up as this button or this keypad here and I prefer the joystick so I'm just going to reconfigure it so I'm just going to press down a button there we go so instead of selecting the, the keypad or joypad I'm going to use that as the, the joystick so I'll put it up, down, left, right instead of the joystick I'm going to use the joypad so up and then left and uh, joystick to I'm going to use for this bit so up and then left and then this configuration here you can see the circles are filled in so I'm just going to follow what it is on this PlayStation 4 controller so A is actually going to be circle B is going to be X and then X is going to be triangle and Y is going to be square the start we're going to have for the right hand button select is going to be the left hand button Page up is going to be L1, R1, L2, R2, L3, R3, and then the hotkey is going to be this button here. And then press OK. And that's it all set up. So it's set up on here rather than these ones. Cool. And next, we're going to add some games. There are some games here, but there's not many. Like on the Super Nintendo, it's just Donkey Kong. Just load that up and make sure it works. It should do its first boot. Okay, press start, which is going to be this button. If you've got any um, arcade games and you need to add credits, that's going to be this, this button, the left hand side button. 
I just want to make sure it uh, controls okay. There we go, and the jump button is the X button. Everything seems to be moving smooth. Ooh. Let's just get to the top, or hopefully get to the top. I said it didn't I? Okay, so we'll come out of there, we'll press this button and then this button. And back out. Right, so I'm just going to add some games. I've got some games on this USB stick that I've got. So I'm just going to plug that into the USB port. And now to access the menu for the games, we've got to press F1. So I'm going to function button and then that button for F1. Right, so I've got the USB stick here. It's called Voodoo. So I'll go into here, find where I've put the ROMs. I want to have the PC engine. So I'm going to do is just highlight that, press Ctrl and C, or you can right click and copy, and then go into the ROMs folder inside here, and find PC engine, which is here. And what I'm going to do is just right click and then select paste. And that's pop copied that in there. Go back to my USB stick. And uh, back into other spectrum, what we got Renegade. So I'm gonna, yeah, Control C, and then go back into ROMs. This one's called ZX Spectrum on here, so I'm just gonna go into that one. Uh, right click and then paste. There we go. So I'm just gonna. Close this, I'll go up to file and then close window. Right, so now to access those we need to refresh the games list here. So we've got the controller, just right hand side, go to game settings and then select update games list. And then yes, so that's just going to refresh. So what have we got? We've got um, PC Engine. So it's now three games in here. Sometimes when you add them, it takes a little bit of time to actually access them because I think it's generating files as it's going along. So I'll press here, splat house, and then hold in. There we go, straight away. Okay, so I'm just gonna press this one to start the game. Show a little bit of gameplay, make sure it's working okay. Okay, pick that up. As you see it's working fine, no lag, no nothing. I'm so really impressed with this simulation to be honest. I'll right, just quite a bit, so we're pressing hold these two buttons down. Back out of it. Oh, Spectrum. Okay, so I'll just go into there, one game available. Oh, Target Renegade. So I'll press X. Brilliant, first, first time. So, what we need here, um, I think these pads and stuff are, are set up for um, Kempston on the Spectrum. So, we'll have to go to Control Options, which is number three. Obviously, you can't press number three on the keyboard here. So, what you need to do is bring up the keyboard, spectrum keyboard. I think it's this one. Yeah, so it's, it's this button here. What you need to do is select number three. So, just using the arrows and then select number three. So, that's selected number three. So, we need to select number three again for Kempston. So, I'll press this button here and then it's already on three. So it's uh, called to select on here. It's asking for player two options, so we'll set them for the keyboard, but we need to press number one. So if we press this button here to bring up the spectrum keyboard, we we'll go across to number one. Select that. Now, what we need to do is start a one player game, so we'll go to number one, so we'll bring the keyboard up again, and select one. And now, okay, just start. Excellent.
one of the best games on the spectrum this is. It'll come out of there. There we go, back out. What I will just show you though is if you're trying to emulate a certain system and it's not going well, you might need to enter some more files. And here it's got Symbiosis. So if you've got a certain system, say what are we doing? Say Nintendo 64. It might need this one file to run properly. And it shows you where to put this file in order for it to make it run. So into the run folders, say if there's something that you want to emulate or find games for. In each one there's an info file. And it gives you a little bit of an in indication of what kind of files it will run. There's just something to look at there for you as well. There's one of those in most of the different ROM folders which gives you indication of what you need to find. Right, I just thought I'd show you a bit of a faster paced game. Remember this is all running from a USB stick, there's no, no hard drive in this computer. So, if you've got an old laptop, but you don't know what to do with it, maybe Windows 10 is a bit too much for it, maybe Windows 7 is a bit too much for it, maybe Windows overall is a bit too much for it, you will probably be able to do something similar to the laptop from what I'm doing here. So, don't let this big machinery go to waste. My name is Cal. Have a good morning, afternoon or good evening. Farewell till next time. And I will see you later.